Thank you very much, Kate. Um, I wanted, so I titled this being together somehow and um, knowing. Um, and uh, I'm just going to speak uh, offhand about three projects, two of them related to the Journal of Aesthetics and Protest, one um, related to a uh, project that um, uh, a learning project with kids. Um, being together somehow. Um, most of my work at this point um, is related to the idea that, uh, or reflects the idea and reflects the, the, the facts that when we are um, in relation, we know whether or not we can articulate what it is we know. And that, um, that uh, fact um, is, um, is important to celebrate the practice of being human, that we are ecological beings in relation. And um, that, though I'm not gonna be talking about it much, that the power of knowledge um, is the power to articulate and to have those truths be accepted as fact by people who account for what is considered smart and knowledgeable. Actually, we'll be talking about that. Um, uh, so just a brief introduction. Yeah, I'm going to jump into a uh, uh, screen share here. Um, do you see this one image? So this is a project um, that I'm currently working with kids um, in Leipzig, Germany, um, where um, it's an adventure playground, the kind of playground that uh, is where kids walk into the playground are given a hammer and nails and are allowed to just start building stuff. Um, with these kids uh, in this playground, we um, uh, built a museum. We asked them to do um, a, a design project to make uh, design, um, models for a museum and then we started building it with them. The museum, um, this is the front entrance, the back backside is a, like a weird dome made out of cardboard and um, wood. The front end is, you're seeing the ticket booth. Uh, the museum is really open to the wind and the rain. And so when I talk about uh, relation and knowing um, and, and being in relationship, not only to one another, but also to the environment, this museum for me really exemplifies that fact because um, the kids in the museum, um, when they're given the, the role of curators and artists and designers are like, oh, this is fun. I'm going to play with this. And then they suddenly encounter places where they can play ticket booth person and they learn to fill in that role and they learn to argue with one another. Um, they learn, oh yeah, the walls uh, need to be white. Oh, but people are drawing on those walls. How do we regulate those rules or do we need to regulate those rules? Um, the, one of the things that I've been highlighting when I work with them is how much the wind and the rain eat at the structures of the walls. Um, and I point that fact out to talk about the changing environment and to highlight the fact that we are not only in relating to ourselves and playing with rules with one another, we are also building structures in relationship to a, a changing world and a changing world that has very real effects on, um, on their places of play. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna turn that screen share off. This, uh, um, okay. Uh, and go back to this. Um, I wanted to briefly talk about two uh, projects that our journal published. Um, just This is a beautiful issue eight that I'm not talking about, but I like it. So I just wanted to <laughs> hold it here. Um, our most recent issue is this one. It's a series of newsletters. It's uh, uh, We did a submission, uh, open submission call for collectives to anti-fascist or avant-garde collectives to write about uh, their avant-garde practices or anti-fascist practices outside of or beside cultural institutions or political institutions. Cultural institutions like museums and galleries, political institutions like the DSA or, um, or other left 
political institutions that are moving words um, and practices from the local into forms that are um, ostensibly more political. And uh, as a journal that is a non-institution, that is, we, um, we don't have funding per se, and we don't have a formal structure that we're collectively run, uh, we take it as our role to think about grassroots organizing and grassroots developments of culture, which is always because of how we've been practicing for 20 years outside or beside or beyond institutional force. Um, and so just we, uh, the issue um, back and front cover designed by Josh McPhee, the interior has a few um, intellectual framing essays, but the bulk of it is 19 autonomously edited um, newsletters from locally situated um, anti-fascist or avant-garde collectives. Uh, from Europe, North America, and Asia. Um, and the, it, we gave them a year to talk with one another about what they are doing and what they're learning outside, um, outside of any kind of force that was going to say, oh, this is good, this is great, this is interesting. We wanted them to stew in their own relationships, in their own sites, to understand what kind of voices and knowledges they're learning and what they need to get down onto the page. Now, with that brief introduction about knowledge that I said before, I found it interesting that, um, yeah, there is access to this project online. Um, I found it interesting, uh, oh, I forgot my point. Um, oh yeah, um, it, so it was worthwhile to think about um, what, what the 19 different collectives chose to articulate because they, um, and it was important that they were collectively um, written because otherwise a human being can say whatever. And as we know, we go through the day with a million different thoughts. Uh, and when I was saying, okay, you're avant-garde, you're anti-fascist, affirming that, but then not really, but then purposefully taking away a political and cultural framework that explains what those are, what those terms mean, that the collective's job was to hold each other accountable, not only to the collective, but also to the site of their local practice. Um, so that ideally their words on the page would um, bring them with, from their heads in the sky to wanting to make, um, beautiful statements that are distributed internationally as our journal is to make statements that are perhaps extremely particular, but entirely, um, yeah, entirely embedded in a place. And um, many of the collectives actually didn't do that. They made grand and wonderful statements um, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but um, one of the things that I found really beautiful um, and notable is that one of the, a few of the collectives had um, writing that basically looked like what uh, Devanshi's uh, image is on this uh, chat page here. Uh, just a whole mess of text and ideas, which ultimately doesn't do very much, but I wanted to, I wanted to create an editorial space and where, where the space between a site and a being together could be articulated. Um, and I want to move on just to a final book project. Uh, we did this book um, with Pluto Press called We Are Nature Defending Itself about a successful insurrection in um, on the Zad in France, where uh, the Zadistas kicked the French government out of um, their territory for six years. Um, stopped the construction of an airport and won the squatters rights to a town. Um, it's an amazing story. I don't have time to get into it, but I wanted to read the, the last paragraph of this forward and then I'm going to pass it on. Um, the cosmopolitical, the radical and the radically queer is entangled throughout the rich sociality of all life and its relations. To properly rebalance those entanglements towards something, towards something, something transformative and sustaining is an art and a work for our day. Um, actually, 
I'm just going to stop it at that. I'll share the rest of the forward um, online. Uh, but the, uh, yeah, the reason why I wanted, we as human beings, I'll just summarize and then um, and pass it on. We as human beings have the capacity to feel and know through massive amounts of knowledge because we are sensing and feeling beings. We feel our relations and we pay attention to what we think is notable. By organizing knowledge socially in different ways, either through the spoken word or just through practicing our being together in new and experimental ways, we have the capacity to change the world because together we bring new things into form um, and new relations into form. Those relations are new only because we express them as meaningful. Um, they exist already, already. It's just highlighting them as particularly present that is the radical transformation rather than yeah.